So uh, now let's turn our attention to homogeneous linear systems. Just to remind you, this is what a homogeneous linear system would look like. This is a general homogeneous linear system where you see the right hand side over here. Okay, you'll see that all the right hand sides are all zeros. They have to be all zeros for this to be a homogeneous linear system. Okay, that's what identifies it. Now, homogeneous linear systems have certain properties when it comes to solutions. One of the most important properties it has is that a homogeneous system, a linear system is always consistent. So homogeneous linear systems are always consistent. That means that we will never can encounter the situation of no solution. So therefore, a homogeneous system, a homogeneous linear system could either have um, a unique solution or infinitely many solutions. But keep in mind that the only possible unique solution to a homogeneous linear system is one where all the variables are zero. And we call that the trivial solution. So we call that the trivial solution. Okay, just one sec. Trivial solution where x1 equals x2 equals xn equals 0. So the only solution, this is the only possibility for a unique solution. All solutions will be all the variables, uh, all the unknowns will be zero, and that's called the trivial solution. So that's the unique solution possibility, and the only other possibility is infinitely many solutions, or infinitely many solutions, okay? So there are only two possibilities. There is no more the chance of uh, any inconsistency Therefore, there is no possibility of no solution. Either it is a non-trivial, these are infinitely many solutions, these are, this is known as the non-trivial solution, okay, also known as non-trivial, for homogeneous only, okay, this applies only to homogeneous systems, uh, as a rule, I mean. Uh, so either you can have uh, non-trivial solutions or trivial solutions, only two possibilities. Okay, there are a couple of other properties that I want to mention here. So this theorem states that for a homogeneous linear system with n unknowns, if the RREF, which is a reduced row echelon form, gives us R non-zero rows, then the system has n minus R free variables. So free variables are the ones that can be set as uh, parameters. So in the previous example, uh, let me pull that down here for you again. Uh, in this example, uh, as you saw, we had, in fact, I'm um, sorry, in this example, you saw we had uh, uh, x3 and x4, two variables. Uh, we had two free variables, so they could be set to parameters. So the free variables are basically the, the, those parameters that are set, uh, I'm sorry, those variables that are set, a, set as parameters, they're called free variables. So for instance, in this equation, uh, well, this is not a, uh, by the way, this is not a, homogeneous linear system, so can't really uh, think about it in that way, but it, it will even apply to this uh, for this particular instance, at this particular instance, but right now this theorem is about homogeneous linear systems. So if you see this example here, and there are, there are four unknowns, n is equal to four in this case, and the number of, it says here, um, gives us r non-zero rows. So there are two, these two are non-zero. These two are non-zero, so r is equal to 2, so there will be two free variables. Okay, so that's just a quick example, uh, just to show you uh, how this works. All right? So this is the last thing I'll leave you with uh, on a, another theorem on homogeneous linear systems. If a homogeneous linear system, if there is a homogeneous linear system with more unknowns than the number of equations, then there are always going to be infinitely many solutions. So that would mean that, for instance, a system like this, so this system, it's got four unknowns, four unknowns, and it's uh, got uh, three equations only. So this is four unknowns, and three equations. So this will have infinitely many solutions this theorem applies. So we'll stop.